That's our top story. The House Judiciary Committee holding its latest impeachment hearing this morning. Counsel representing the Judiciary and Intelligence Committee will be questioned. This is House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is calling on Democrats to file articles of impeachment to set up a trial in the Senate. House Judiciary Committee Ranking Member Doug Collins on Sunday Morning Futures with me yesterday saying he wants this postponed. So explain to me what happened. You're saying Adam Schiff and his team dumped thousands of pages of new documents in your lap last night? Yesterday afternoon, we sure did. I, look, this is just how desperately uh, they are, desperately focused on impeaching this president that they are. Last week, we had our first hearing with the law professors, and Jonathan Turley put it to bed about how they were actually abusing power. The next morning, uh, Speaker Pelosi comes on and says, basically, I've had enough of this. Go ahead and write the articles of impeachment. Now, at that point in time, I'm not sure why we're doing anything else, because they've made up their mind. They're going to do what they're going to do. They've decided to not care if the president's represented, not care if the president gets due process, not care if the Fairness. But then again yesterday, the actual the Adam Schiff report and the documents we're going to be talking about tomorrow, they decided to give us all the underlying documents and everything that they've been collecting, but not only just from HIPSI, but from budget and foreign affairs as well. This is not fair. There's no way we can process these thousand documents, but better yet, the Democrats can't process these documents because this is something that they're looking to do and use tomorrow, but they've not even read. This is a show. This is a farce. This is whatever you want to call it. The American people are having their tax dollars wasted on this impeachment. Let's talk more about this with Arizona Congressman, House Judiciary Committee member Andy Biggs. Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Thanks for having me, Maria. Tell us about those documents and what they tell us about this hearing today. What should we expect? Well, so, so before we get to the documents, you're going to get four hours, just think of this, four hours of staff talking to themselves. That's the first part of this hearing today before the members go into their uh, round of uh, questioning. So this is really unprecedented. And then Doug's right. I mean, we're talking literally thousands of documents, things that we've asked for for weeks so that we could look at it. Uh, to, they're the underlying documents that get to the conclusions that they have already made in this predetermined outcome process. That's the problem with what they did on Saturday. And not, not only did, have Republicans not been able to look at it, believe me, the Democrats haven't looked at it either. And they frankly don't care because it's all about removing this president. And they're going to do everything they can. So we're going to spend four hours listening to staff talk about it and uh, ask questions later of staff. That's unprecedented, especially in an impeachment hearing. You know, Adam Schiff said he was like special counsel. Well, in, pre in, the, uh, in the Clinton hearing, the special counsel came in and sat there for hours upon hours. So there were multiple rounds of questions. Uh, he had provided three weeks, nearly three weeks before the hearing all of 36 boxes, bankers boxes, of, of the underlying evidence. So everybody had weeks to look at it instead of uh, basically hours to look at so it. So if we're not going to get anything from this hearing today, why is it happening? Is it really just more efforts to muddy the waters ahead of an important uh, evidence that we are getting, the IG report, uh, which is going to show us the wrongdoing that took place in the 2016 election? Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz's report will be out today. Uh, we're expecting it around lunchtime, 1 p.m. Eastern, to zero in on how U.S agencies improperly investigated President Trump during the 2016 campaign. What's your take on this? Well, uh, the first thing is it is no accident that the, we've known for weeks that he was going to release it on December 9th. It's no accident that this impeachment hearing is going today, keeping us in there. It's no accident that, that Nadler was scheduling meetings during the uh, Intelligence Committee's public hearings. So we won't be there for the IG. He's giving a member briefing this morning at 10 a.m. and we won't be able to be there for that because we'll be at this thing and it's trying to distract from the wrongdoings that that's going to come out in the IG report that's for sure and uh, and and that's just the way they're doing this they, so they don't aren't interested in the, we, the, the we've facts. covered this for three years and I am fully aware of what took place in 2016 and how they tried to frame Donald Trump insert his name in 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 Russia meddling what specifically are you expecting from this IG report because I know that this report is focusing only on FISA abuse on Sunday morning futures I spoke with Trey Gowdy a year ago and he said that there's a piece of expo uh, exculpatory evidence where there was a conversation between George Papadopoulos and an informant, where the informant says to George Papadopoulos, isn't this great that Russia has Hillary's emails? This is great for you and Trump. And he says, no, it's not. I would never do something like that. That's treason. And of course, anytime you're talking to an informant, he didn't know it was an informant, but that informant is Mike. 
he's microphoned and it's wired. And so there's a transcript of that. That transcript wasn't given to the FISA court. What other exculpatory evidence should we expect from this IG report today? Well, you're going to see that not, not only did they manipulate and uh, keep exculpatory evidence out, you're going to see that there were, there were folks that actually doctored the evidence, or excuse me, the affidavit itself or the information that was included with the, uh, with the affidavit for warrant. So that's what you're going to see uh, at the very minimum. And uh, beyond that, I think you're going to see that ultimately a lot of this is in the hands of Mr. Durham right now, and that's why you saw some indictments that came out recently. Uh, tell me about that, because, you know, I mean, there was a criminal referral, for example, uh, against Andrew McCabe, uh, the number two FBI uh, guy, and uh, he obviously is, is involved in this. Um, he signed one of the FISA applications, along with uh, Jim Comey signing three of them. Why is he out and about trying to trash this IG report on CNN, make him believe like he has nothing to do with it? They don't even know the questions to ask because they've been wrong for four years. Uh, tell me about that, what a criminal referral means, and will there be criminal referrals in this IG report? Um, I, I hope that there are criminal referrals. Um, I think that I'm concerned always because I think uh, Mr. Horowitz, he finds stuff and then he says, well, maybe not, maybe not uh, in intent. He doesn't find the culpable mental state, and that can be a problem. But I think he's going to refer some things. I think he already has referred some things. And you've got people uh, like uh, Andrew McCabe and Mr. Comey who I think should get a close look at. But uh, in the end, whether they get an actual criminal referral, I'm unsure. We'll see, we'll see more later this morning. Uh, if, I were, if I were there, I'd see it in the morning. Otherwise, I'll see it this afternoon with and, you. And the other thing is uh, Carter Page, who also joined me yesterday, and he's expecting yeah. lots of exculpatory evidence to come out. But one important thing about Carter Page is that he worked for the government before. He was actually a government informant. He was an informant back in 2008, 2013. He described himself as an unpaid confidential intelligence source for the CIA and the FBI. Uh, at some point, maybe when he decided to join Donald Trump, they turned on him and they decided to start spying on him. Tell me about that. Should, would that be considered exculpatory evidence that they did not tell the FISA court that this is an individual that at one point was helping the government? Uh, yeah, that would be a, that would be helpful. I mean, they, they didn't. What you're really getting at is they didn't tell the whole picture about who Carter Page was and why. Uh, the, the, the good side of what Carter Page was doing and why that would exculpate him vis-a-vis -vis the allegations that they were making against Carter Page. And so when they suppressed that, uh, they, they violated the law because the FISA law requires them to provide all exculpatory evidence. I see. Whatever Carter, whatever Carter Page might have been doing that was positive, they should have revealed that. Any doubts in their case, they should have.